Whitney. We are so glad that on a busy day, you've chosen to be here to worship in community together. Um, on a personal note, my name is Pastor Valerie Webster, and I am your retired associate priest, although I can't say that I've quite hit that retirement, you know, more gentle pace, but I'm working on it. And I want to thank you for keeping me in your prayers. I have been wearing a, a boot, and I'm now moving into a shoes and a PT, but your prayers for a really bad break um, that has b finally begun to heal are deeply, deeply appreciated. And the official announcement that I wanted to um, offer up is that All Saints and Big Sky Joint Council has set the 2024 annual meeting date as Sunday, February 4th, starting at 12 30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And you're invited to join the meeting virtually. And to conduct this virtual meeting in an efficient manner, I am told to tell you, all the reports and documents have been sent to you as attachments to an email. And you will find the Zoom link um, in the February 4th Friday news. And if you didn't get the email, then uh, please, in your bulletins, you will see. You just need to go to that e uh, email, and they'll get you on the list to get it. Are there any questions about that? All right. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Please stand and face the back. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Let us join our voices in singing hymn 493. Praise, 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 praise,
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Without end, without end, amen. Word without end, without end, amen. Word without end, without end, amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people. In our time, grant us your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite any children who would like to come forward to come forward. Hey, Maeve. Thank you for coming forward. Hi, welcome. So, in this morning, it's very good to see each one of you. And one of the things we know about being in church is that this is a community of people that care, right? Well, in today's gospel reading, Jesus has come into this town that's a, a garrison town. It's got the Roman uh, soldiers are there, and there's a customs station. And he, um, it's, a, it's a town that's sort of oppressed, if you will. And he goes into the synagogue, and he starts teaching. And they, the people are saying, oh my gosh, he's speaking from his heart with such authority. They could tell that he knew and loved God. And then a man who in our day we would say he probably was suffering from some mental illness where he was overwhelmed. He started screaming and yelling and crying out, you are the son of God. And Jesus, do you think he got mad at him? No, not at all. Whereas some of the people were pretty uncomfortable, he spoke to them, to this man with love, and he said, I want that unclean spirit. That's the language they used in that day. You don't want to pull that because we'll bring down some candles. We've got to be a little careful. Um, he healed this man, and guess what? he could be back and part of the community again. And then everybody who saw this happen said, oh my gosh, he didn't only say healing, but it happened. We saw it in front of us. And they talked all about it in the town. And guess what? People have been talking about that ever since. Are we talking about it right here now, over 2,000 years later? Yeah, half a world away. And Jesus and Jesus' love are still speaking into our hearts 
and bringing love and inviting us to bring love in our families and to our friends. And I want you to know, and this is in joy for my uh, mentor here, Darius, that God loves you, and God loves you, and God loves you, and God loves you, and God loves you. Can you go tell the people you came with today that God loves them? And then off with Domi, okay? If you would like to. Good to have you. Thank you for coming. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord, your God at Oreb, on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord, my God, anymore, or ever see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not hear the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name, a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading Psalm 111. Hallelujah, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works, in, in giving, giving them, them the, the lands of the, the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They, they stand, stand fast, fast forever and ever, and ever because, because they, they are, are done in truth and equity. equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. A, re a reading from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom, all, er, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone 
however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are, not, we are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess this knowledge, eating at a temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family, and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their failing, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, 
there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And once Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Since our childhoods, we have known instinctively to locate firm footholds, to climb a tree, to scale a boulder, to ascend a ladder. And if swimming were a part of our growing up, we also learned to float, to move through water, and be held up by water. This morning, I invite you to bring your lived experiences to the footholds and floating that Psalm 111 verse 10 invites us to experience for ourselves. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Let's begin by unpacking the meaning of the oft-heard refrain, the fear of the Lord. It's not only found in Psalms, but I recently taught uh, wisdom literature, and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Job are full of that phrase, fear of the Lord, too. So we spent a bit of time looking at what that means. This is a near ancient, uh, an ancient Near Eastern idiom for faith or spiritual resilience. This fear does not signify a disabling terror, but rather an overwhelming awe before a transcendent God. The psalmist affirms that people who stand in amazement, respect, and honor before God humbly accept their human limitations while simultaneously letting go and trusting God on the one hand and striving to God to honor God with the other. And what happens when we are in awe of God? Well, sacred wisdom and good understanding emerge from our trust for dwelling in the mystery. And the final phrase, God's praise endures forever, is Bible speak for saying, the peace and joy that we experience in God, regardless of our circumstances, brings us 
into eternity, even when we're in the here and now. This equanimity, which the world did not give and which the world cannot take away, is the beginning of wisdom and empowers good understanding. So, through the lens of Psalm 111, verse 10, I want us to consider the call to our time to lead and to follow from a place of godly wisdom and love. Deuteronomy 18 literally chronicles an elder Moses speaking to the once enslaved, now liberated Hebrews in the desert on the cusp of the promised land. And Deuteronomy 18, through the mystery of the Holy Spirit enlivening scripture, also speaks ancient, eternal truths to us in the complexity and messiness of our time today. In short, God will continue to raise up prophetic leaders to lead the Hebrews into the promised land and to lead us into the already, not yet, kingdom of God. God will raise up prophetic leaders like presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton of the ELCA Lutheran Church, and like presiding Bishop Michael Curry of the Episcopal Church. Spiritual leaders who stand in the tradition of Moses and speak in God's life-giving name. Yet, the Lord, through Moses, warns the Hebrews and us to be spiritually savvy enough to discern the tenor of false prophets, too. With God's help, we can identify fork-tongued leaders who speak on behalf of the gods of power, prestige, and personal glory, and who foment fear, hatred, and hypocrisy. Moses warns that God will hold all accountable, leaders who presume to speak falsehoods, and followers who, knowing the truth, prefer false prophets who stroke their vanity and tickle their fancies. For God gave people of yesterday and today free will. And God respects us enough to let us experience the consequences of words said and left unsaid, of things done and left undone, of promises upheld and promises broken. A close-up look at Jesus' actions in today's Gospel reading from Mark, chapter 1, gives us a nuanced glimpse of what compassionate prophetic leadership looks like. Jesus journeys to Capernaum, a Roman-occupied garrison town on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And on the Sabbath, he enters a place of public prayer and teaches if only Mark had shared Jesus' words along with how blown away everybody was in response to his words and actions. Perhaps Jesus was helping them see God's kingdom come where God's will will be done. Perhaps Jesus' electric spiritual energy communicated his distinctive authority. Well, while Jesus is teaching, a young man cries out. Convulsing, the young man confronts Jesus and identifies him as the Holy One of God. Now, if somebody started doing that here right now, we'd all be feeling like that's a little awkward and the ushers would be probably helping that person to move outside so we could continue. But what does Jesus do? He is aware of this realm and the next. 
So at the same time, he shows deep compassion for this young man who's overwhelmed, or they would use the words, possessed by an unclean spirit as opposed to the Holy Spirit. And he also recognizes that the power that he's up against, so he rebukes that spirit. And this man is not only freed of that possession, but he's able to return to his community in love. Interestingly, Mark never addresses why there are forces that take hold of people bringing misery, disease, and ultimately death, nor where these forces have come from or where they return to. It's just understood. Mark, however, highlights that Jesus is different from the scribes or that would be the, the lawyers of, the religious lawyers that were gathered there. He exercises action-packed prophetic leadership. He feels compassion, not revulsion. And grounded in God's love, he prioritizes concern for this man over the custom of not working on the Sabbath. Jesus, who inhabits both the customs of this world and the cosmic dynamics of the next, interprets Sabbath generously. Jesus invites his disciples to follow his example, teaching through word and action. And I trust and pray that if we did have somebody here who burst out in distress, they would also receive care from this community as they moved towards healing. But here, let us move on to Paul in his letter to the church at Corinth, where he further fleshes out the responsibilities that we Christians have towards one another and he shows us the choices he makes as a leader. In brief, knowledgeable, confident Christ followers are called to put their concern for uninformed, impressionable new believers ahead of their own personal freedom. In his letter, Paul calls out the Corinthian Christians because they prioritized their knowledge over love and concern for others. Paul fully recognizes that technically they're right, meat sacrificed to idols in the Roman temple, which, by the way, was the only way that people could get meat was from those temples where it was roasted in that context. He recognizes that God's not offended because idols don't exist, and there is no God but one. But Paul also knows that for believers who were previously temple worshipers, the liberty of the Corinthian Christians is a stumbling block and could set them off in a bad direction. Paul invites us to prioritize love of one another over our own personal freedoms to do what we want with our great knowledge. So how might we live Paul's teaching in our context? Novelist David Foster Wallace, in a 2005 commencement address at Kenyon College, an Episcopal college, offered the newly minted college graduates this theological advice. And I think it might be good for us, too. He said, in the day-to-day -day trenches of adult life, there is actually no such thing as atheism. There is no such thing as not worshiping. Everybody worships. The only choice we get is what we worship. And an outstanding reason for worshiping, Wallace says, is that pretty much anything else you will worship will eat you alive. If you worship money and things, 
If they are where you tap real meaning in life, then you will never have enough. Never feel you have enough. It's the truth. Worship your own body and you will always feel ugly and when the time and age start showing, you will die a million deaths before those you love grieve you. Worship power, you will feel weak and afraid and you will need ever more power over others to keep that fear at bay. Worship your intellect, being as smart, you will end up feeling stupid, a fraud, always on the verge of being found out. Wallace extrapolates that idols we worship in our time and culture are disguised and dangerous. They don't come as little statues. But we need but look at our relationships, our calendars, and our financial statements to discern where our hearts really lie. We are living in a complex, messy time with very high stakes. A lot of false prophets, or as we might call them today, talking heads are keen to impress us with what they know. But ultimately, knowledge puffs up, leaving us spiritually bereft. Paul affirms, anyone who loves God is known by him, deeply known and loved. In conclusion, our awe and trust in God leads us into the beginning of wisdom and true understanding. This day, this week, Let's take some time to reflect. Have we been heeding and exercising prophetic leadership in our homes, workplaces, and communities? Have we put loving action ahead of custom and routine? Have we prioritized our love for God and neighbor over our own wants and freedoms. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Amen. Please stand. Let us join with Christians around the globe and across time in affirming our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for God's blessing and healing for the church, the world, and all of creation. Loving God, we pray that your example of teaching with confidence and authority builds up your church in love. May all church leaders and teachers honor your instruction and model your ways. God of grace, please receive our prayer. Caring God, we pray for our neighbors who are part of other religious communities, for Buddhists, Hindus, Sikhs, Muslims, Jews, and Mormons, close to us and far away, and for those searching and seeking you in other ways. God of grace, receive our prayer. Renewing God, we pray for all of creation, that waterways flow clean, and clear, and wilderness lands are protected. God of grace, receive our prayer. Justice seeking God, we pray for world leaders, governments in the midst of transition, our own federal and state leaders, tribal governments in Montana and across the country, and our own county commissioners that they would lead with honor and mindfulness. God of grace, receive our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need, especially those who are living in the midst of war, those who have known rejection, and any who struggle with long-term illness or chronic pain, those without access to safe housing or health care, and those who suffer from mental illness. God of grace, receive our prayer. Holy God, we pray for our congregation, for its artists and musicians, for its educators and caregivers, for those who handle our finances and those who attend to worship details. We also pray for those on our prayer list, Jeremy, Rich, Steve, Linda, Carol, Doug, Jaden, Bill, Pete, John, Julie, Melissa, Candace, Tim, Sarah, Lily, Daniela, Isabella, Julie, Bob, Roger, Corrine, Lauren, Gordon, Gail, Barbara, Jane, Jerry, and Jill. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes with us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you.
All are welcome at the table. And if you do not wish to receive, just go like this and you will receive a blessing. Let us stand for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. you, O holy God, you are the life and light of all by your powerful word. You created all things. Through the prophets you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. Here is your light shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is real, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us and this meal that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Come to the table, for now all is ready. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, See you. 
your burdens to God. Come bring your burdens to God. Come bring your burdens to God. For Jesus will never say no. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to live by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Holy One, oh, please stand for the blessing. The Holy One who names you, the Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, three in one, bless you now and always. Amen. Let us join our voices in Jesus Shall Reign, 544.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And all are invited for coffee and a tr adult forum after. <laughs> <laughs>